the e content is exclusively meant for academic purposes and for enhancing teaching and learning any other use for economic commercial purpose is strictly prohibited the users of the content shall not distribute disseminate or share it with anyone else and its use is restricted to advancement of individual knowledge the information provided in the c content is developed from authentic references to the best of my knowledge beginning with the wave equation resulting from maxwell's equations we show that light is an electromagnetic wave and go on to define the flow of electromagnetic energy in terms of poincting's vector we see that del square e is equal to mu 0 epsilon 0 delta 2 e by delta t square and delta 2 b is equal to mu 0 epsilon 0 delta 2 b by del t square are characteristic differential equations of wave motion let us consider an infinite plane wave by this is meant a wave in which the vector e or b depends only on one coordinate so divergence of e we know is delta e x by delta x plus delta e y by delta y plus delta e z by delta z now assuming no variations with y and z for e and b also delta e x by delta x is equal to 0 e x is constant in space delta e x by delta t is 0 means e is static or a dc field so for propagation of plane waves in any direction the electric field must be at right angles to the direction of propagation we now have some assumptions for simplification we assume that the wave is traveling in the positive x direction the tx is always perpendicular to x the e field is resolved into two components y and z and we assume that the e field has only one transverse component that is the y component it has a zero z component then delta ex by delta x plus delta e y by delta y and delta e z by delta z translate to delta e y delta e by delta y being zero delta e by delta z being zero only non zero component is delta e by delta x we know curl of e is equal to minus del v by del t component wise curl of e except component is delta e z by delta y minus delta e y by delta z which is equal to minus delta v x by delta t and this is equal to 0 then curl of e y is equal to delta e x by delta z minus delta e z by delta x which is equal to minus delta b y by delta t this is also 0 curl of e z is delta e y by delta x minus delta e x by delta y and this is equal to minus delta b z by delta t in which delta e x by delta y is 0 but delta e y by delta x is non zero so the components of e above are zero because of no variation along y and z and a zero z component thus finally we have delta e y by delta x equal to minus delta b z by delta t since the y and z components of the magnetic field both have a zero time derivative they are constant fields hence we can ignore these and set them to zero that is bx is zero and by is zero we shall now see that the electric and magnetic fields are at right angles to each other delta e by delta x is equal to minus delta b z by delta t this equation shows that if the e field has only a y component the magnetic field will have only a z component this means that the electric and magnetic fields are at right angles to each other also both the electric and magnetic fields are at right angles to the direction of propagation now let's consider curl of b which is given by mu 0 epsilon 0 delta e by delta t since the e field has only y component as the non zero component we have set bx equal to 0 and by equal to 0 then the only non zero component is delta bz by delta x which is equal to minus mu 0 epsilon 0 delta e by by delta t you can as an exercise verify the above equation by opening out the components of b the result of all this work is that only one component each of the electric and magnetic fields is non zero and these components must satisfy delta e by by delta x equal to minus delta bz by delta t where delta bz by delta x is equal to minus mu 0 epsilon 0 delta e by by delta t and we can combine both these equations in one as follows we take the derivative with respect to x of delta e by by delta x equal to minus delta bz by delta t and the derivative with respect to time of delta bz by delta x equal to minus mu 0 epsilon 0 
delta e y by delta t giving us delta 2 e y by delta x square equal to mu 0 epsilon 0 delta 2 e y by delta t square as the one dimensional wave equation. We can rewrite this equation as delta 2 e y by delta x square equal to 1 upon v square delta 2 e y by delta t square. v square is equal to 1 upon mu 0 epsilon 0. According to theory, v was predicted to be 1 upon under root of mu 0 epsilon 0 which is c, the speed of light. We can calculate this and confirm that it comes out to be 2.998 into 10 to the power 8 meters per second. This value was closest to the velocity of light as experimentally verified by Michelson, Peace and Pearson. Now, delta bz by delta x is equal to minus mu 0 epsilon 0, delta e y by delta t and choosing a wave traveling in the positive x direction, let e y be equal to f t minus x upon c and bz be equal to g t minus x upon c. So the most important conclusion is that light is an electromagnetic wave. Then delta bz by delta x is equal to delta g by delta x which is differentiating g with respect to t minus x upon c and then differentiating t minus x upon c with respect to x we get minus g dash upon c. Similarly delta e y by delta t which will be equal to delta f by delta x comes out to be equal to f dash. Therefore minus 1 upon c g dash is equal to minus mu 0 epsilon 0 f dash or 1 upon c g is equal to mu 0 epsilon 0 f neglecting any constant fields or c times bz is equal to ey or ey is equal to c times mu 0 hz. So if we take the ratio of ey to hz it comes out to be under root of mu 0 upon epsilon 0 and this ratio is known as the characteristic impedance of the wave having a value nearly 377 ohms. This means that in the electromagnetic wave, the magnetic induction component is less by a factor of C as compared to the electric component. This figure illustrates the vector relations in simple harmonic waveform. The direction of propagation is that of the vector E cross H. We can see that B has been shown highly exaggerated. We know from the previous slide that B is C times is 1 upon C times less than E. But here, just to make the graphical representation clearer and more easy to understand, I have drawn a highly exaggerated B wave. distance between the two maxima xm1 minus xm2 is equal to twice pi c by omega which is lambda one wavelength. The wave in which the electric vector and hence the magnetic vector is always parallel to one direction is known as plane polarized wave. The plane in which the electric vector and direction of propagation lie is called the plane of polarization. In the more general case the electric vector has a component along the z-axis and a corresponding magnetic component along the y-axis. These components belong to the same wave and hence have the same frequency and they need not be in phase. The place of the resultant vector in the yz plane is an ellipse for the most general case as may be seen by eliminating omega t between the two expressions ey is equal to e1 sin omega t and ez is equal to e2 sin omega t plus phi. The magnitude, eccentricity and orientation of the major axes depends upon e1, e2 and phi. This is known as elliptically polarized radiation. If E1 is equal to E2 and phi is equal to pi by 2, then magnitude of E which is equal to under root of Ey square plus Ez square is a constant and the trace of the extremity of E is a circle. So this is known as circularly polarized radiation. Our knowledge of radiation comes about through the absorption of energy that electromagnetic waves carry. We can get this quantity as follows. E dot curl of H equal to del D by del T and H dot curl of E equal to minus del B by del T results in H dot curl of E minus E dot curl of H equal to minus H dot del B by del T plus E dot del D by del T which is equal to minus 
del by del t of half mu zero h square plus half epsilon zero e square. The right hand side represents the rate of decrease of total electric and magnetic energy density. Using the vector identity h dot curl of e minus e dot curl of h is equal to divergence of e cross h and integral of divergence of e cross h over a closed volume enclosed by a surface s gives us integral e cross h. Hence the decrease of energy within the volume is accounted for by an outward flow of energy through the bounding surface equal to the integral of e cross h over this surface. The vector n representing this flow of energy is known as Poynting's vector. From the previous discussion, it is seen to be normal to the wavefront and in the direction of motion. Hz is equal to epsilon 0 C E Y. The rate of flow of energy per unit area due to the plane wave can be written as n is equal to E cross H, which is equal to epsilon 0 C E square n. n is the unit vector in the direction of propagation of the wave. E is in volts per meter and n is equal to 2.65 into 10 to the power minus 3 e square n and its units are in watts per meter square.